Live breaking news, Nez Nation. Judge McAfee, Judge Scott McAfee, has issued a ruling today, April 4th, 2024, based on the defendant's motion to dismiss the case under the First Amendment. So um, basically, this is his ruling uh, on the Pitbull Sadal and other defendants, Schaefer, and the like, uh, Michael Roman, um, their motion to dismiss this case, even Harrison Floyd, who we had on our show just today, uh, to dismiss this case based on the fact that Sadow essentially said this case is contingent upon protected speech. And the zenith of protected speech is political speech by a former president, and therefore this case should be dismissed. And remember how we went through, so I'm going to go through this entire hearing. Obviously, Judge McAfee, you probably already know this, he made his decision, he denied, he rejected uh, uh, Trump's uh, and, and other defendants' um, motion to dismiss this under the First Amendment. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to go through this, go through Judge McAfee's uh, hearing, or I'm sorry, his filing. And then we're going to talk about um, what this means moving forward. I'm also going to share, stick around, I'm also going to share the Sadow, the pit bull Trump's attorney, Steve Sadow. I'm going to share his response to Judge McAfee's ruling. So just really quickly, a quick cap. So remember, we the last hearing in this entire Fannie Cash Money G Fulton County debacle, this Georgia inter interference in the election case, the last hearing was a hearing that was filed by Sadow and others saying, can you please hear more evidence that, uh, you know, we want to, we think that this whole case should be dismissed based on uh, the First Amendment, that uh, Trump's speech is protected under political speech, under the First Amendment. Um, he then uh, uh, filed an interlocutory appeal to the higher courts. Uh, and there's probably more appeals to come. A lot of people I can already see all over online, they're saying, oh, yeah, justice wins. All these crazy leftists that are saying, you know, oh, yeah, Trump got denied. But but uh, there's a lot more to this. So I need you to stick around. Um, but let's go through this. Then we're going to I'm going to tell you what it means. And then we're going to look at um, Steve Sadow's response, the pit bull. OK, so let's get to it here. So uh, order on defendant's motion to dismiss. OK, let's see here to dismiss under the First Amendment. Uh, and then obviously, uh, you know, you can see who the participants are. Um, so defendants seek to dismiss the indictment on as applied as a facial First Amendment grounds, U.S. Constitution Amendment 1. They argue this prosecution violates the First Amendment's protection of political speech and activity, freedom of association, and the right to petition Congress as applied to their alleged conduct and further contend that the indicted charges are overbroad. After considering the extensive briefing, the argument of counsel and indictment, the court finds that these vital constitutional protections do not, there you have it, we find that they do not reach the actions and statements alleged by the state, nor do the statutes themselves facially violate the First Amendment. The defendant's motions are therefore denied. So McAfee is basically saying, no, uh, that actually what you said, uh, you know, actually does constitute uh, uh, intent or criminal intent. Uh, and it's, it's a really, really big decision, actually. Um, let's see. I, I, this is kind of a long, um, well, it's not too long, but... Um, it's not too long, but I, I don't know if I want to go through everything. So I might fast forward a little bit, um, to some things that I think are important, but uh, you know, remember what Harrison Floyd said today in our live stream. And by the way, if you missed that interview, it was jam packed with explosive new information from the horse's mouth. This is one of the co-defendants, Harrison Floyd. And uh, he, what a smart, I thought he was such a, an amazing smart. He's a former Marine. Uh, he served in Iraq. He um, believes in his country. He was so articulate, intelligent, 
the stuff that he shared will blow your mind regarding the uh, 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 inter election interference in 2020. It's going to blow your mind. I've got new videos coming out, but you've got to check out the whole interview. It's amazing. I'll leave it on the end screen, and I'll also, it's on my channel, YouTube or Rumble. The First Amendment, a bridge to a basic description. The First Amendment means that government has no power to restrict expression because of its message, its ideas, its subject matter, or its conduct. And that laws regulating speech outside categorically excluded forms of expression are subject to exacting scrutiny. Scott versus State, 2016. Ashcroft versus American Celebrity Leader. So he cites a uh, case law. This is Judge McAfee. And my point of bringing up Harrison Floyd was is Harrison Floyd actually believes that Judge Scott McAfee is abiding by the law. He said he was calling strikes, strikes, and calling balls, balls. He was following the book to a T, which I, I I believe that's true. I think he has the right intentions. I do think he should have disqualified all of Fannie Willis's um, office from this case. Uh, maybe not dismiss the case entirely. I mean, you guys know I used to call him Pussycat McAfee. I, I, I still kind of call him that because I think he played the safe route. Um, you know, he's playing checkers. He's being smart. But, um, you know, I, I did like the fact that Harrison uh, uh, Floyd brought that up and was talking about it and, and feels that he's fair. I, I agree with that. Although the First Amendment is broad umbrella that shelters all political points of view and shields a wide range of avenues for expression, including political speech, is not without restriction. Citing more case law. Several narrowly defined forms of expression are categorically excluded from protection. These, okay, so so he's saying, yes, it's free speech, but there are some things that are not, uh, uh, you know, that are, are, are not um, relevant. And yes, it's protected under free speech, under the First Amendment, but there are some excluded categories. So what are those excluded categories? These excluded categories include speech integral to criminal conduct, fraud, or speech presenting an imminent threat that the government can prevent. Alvarez. He cites uh, case law. Restrictions on speech integral to criminal conduct have never been thought to raise any constitutional problem. Speech or writing used as integral part of conduct in violation of valid criminal statute is not constitutionally protected. Nor is a false statement which threatens to deceive and harm the government that is knowingly and willfully made in a matter within a government agency's jurisdiction. The First Amendment's freedom of association includes the right to associate for the purpose of of engaging in those activities protected by the First Amendment. Speech, assembly, petition for the redress of, grief, of grievances and exercise of religion. This protection encompasses a political party's decisions about the identity and the process for electing its leaders. Citizens may exercise freely First Amendment rights in support of their chosen candidate. But like political speech, the right of association is not immune from restriction, particularly where the state indisputably has compelling interest in reserving, preserving the integrity of its election process. So it's essentially what McAfee's saying, and, and he's using case law to back up his ruling. He's saying, yes, you have First Amendment rights. You can support, you can exercise freely, but that does not mean that you are um, able to just say whatever you want, especially when it impinges upon the integrity of an electoral uh, process. And so that's what he's using to say that, um, to justify his ruling, essentially uh, denying Trump, denying Sadow uh, the dismissal based on uh, protection under the First Amendment. Similarly, the protection afforded by the petition clause of the First Amendment, ensuring the ability to communicate one's will to government officials and regard as implicit in the very idea of government Republican informed, does not extend to allegedly fraudulent petitions. So who alleges those fraudulent petitions is my 
point of contention. Are we supposed to? So isn't this what Sadow said when Sadow said that they're alleging that these are, you know, false? We have to assume that they are false, but that, that even deserves more protection under the positing of fraudulent or the allegations. I think he made a good, I think Sadow made a great point. In other words, okay, here's maybe he'll, he'll kind of simplify this here. In other words, the law does not insulate speech allegedly made during fraudulent or criminal conduct from prosecution under the guise of petitioning the government. The right to petition is not absolute, nor does it carry special First Amendment status that would render claims asserted under it immune from criminal recourse. Turning to the arguments at hand, with these guarantees and limitations in mind, the defendants generally seek dismissal on the basis that it violates their First Amendment right to contest the 2020 presidential election. The defendants' constitutional challenges are more specifically summarized as follows. The defendants challenge George's RICO, the racketeering... Um, it's like an organized crime act. I forget what it's uh, totally blank. Facially and as applied to the alleged conduct in count one as violating their First Amendment rights to speak, associate, and petition the government and assert that every predicate act upon which the alleged conspiracy is founded constitutes protected speech and conduct. The defendants argue that OCGA, it is a crime for an individual to falsely hold him or herself as a public officer employee with intent to mislead another into believing that he or she is actually such officer. An unconstitutional facially and as applied to their conduct alleged in counts eight and nine, which charge the defendants with impersonating a public officer and conspiracy to commit impersonating a public officer because it infringes on their right to speak, associate and petition the government. The defendants challenge the constitutionality of OCGA. An individual commits the offense and forgery in the first degree when with the intent to defraud or she knowingly makes, with the intent to defraud, he or she knowingly makes, alters, or possesses any writing other than a check in a fictitious name or in such manner that the writing was made or altered purports to have been made by authority of one who did not give such authority and utters to deliver such writing, facially and as applied to their conduct, alleged in counts 10, 11, and 16, 17, which charged the defendants with forgery in the first degree and conspiracy to commit forgery in the first degree on the ground that their speech and conduct relate to a matter of public concern. The indictment alleges the defendants Giuliani, Smith, and Chile knowingly and willfully made false statements to members of the Georgia State Senate and Senate Judiciary Subcommittee meeting that the defendants knowingly and willfully made and used a false document and conspired to knowingly and willfully file false documents purporting to certify 2020 presidential votes of the electors from Georgia and falsely representing that defendants were chairman and secretary of the 2020 Georgia Electoral College meeting that the defendants mailed with the intent to file false certificate of the votes of the 2020 electors from Georgia in a court of the United States and conspired to knowingly file, enter, and record the false documents. The defendants Trump and Eastman knowingly filed the document containing false statements concerning the election in a lawsuit in the United States District Court for the Northern District of Georgia that the defendants conspired to commit solicitation of false statements and writings. So it's a conspiracy. They conspired. They tried. This is all about, uh, you know, him trying to get those 11. I just need 11,000 votes. Um, as applied constitutional challenges typically rely on the development of factual record after trial, yet our Supreme Court's decision in Hall, Boyer, and Major demonstrate that as applied challenges may be considered pre-trial using the limited record at hand, Hall v. State, based on the evidence and record before us, we find that the statute has not been unconstitutionally applied. While Hall and Boyer involve due process, vagueness challenges, neither of these 
opinions articulated a procedural distinction between First Amendment challenges and all others. The court therefore follows the Georgia Supreme Court's path in Hall, Boyer, and Major, and as the state holds to its position, that nothing is stipulated or agreed to beyond the grand jury's averments confines its analysis to the four corners of the indictment. He thinks that this is up to a jury. The jury needs to decide um, whether or not it's not up to him, whether or not to dismiss the case. So essentially, that's what McAfee is saying. So this is important uh, up here. The state's allegations do not suggest that this prosecution comes solely because it believes the speech was inaccurate and the prosecution does not result in merely restricting false speech. Instead, the indictment averts throughout that the defendants acted willfully and knowfully. There's the conspiracy or the conspirators and that they impacted matters of governmental concern. These are not legal conclusions, but issues of fact. Whoa. The allegations that the defendant's speech or conduct was carried out with criminal intent are something only a jury can resolve. And then just, I mean, just to kind of wrap it up, I'll leave a copy of this in the description and show notes. If you want to check it out, read the whole thing. And you have some, uh, I would love to hear your thoughts on this, Nez Nation. If you have any comments or anything I may have missed, I'm kind of just covering the real basic tenets of what McAfee is saying here. Um, conclusion, without foreclosing the ability to raise similar as applied challenges at the appropriate time, after the establishment of a factual record, the defendant's motions based on First Amendment grounds are denied, so ordered this fourth day of April, 2024, signed Judge Scott McAfee. There you have it. So here we have the Pitbull Sadow's response. This was only, uh, this was earlier today, 1025 a.m. April 4th. And the pit bull says, my statement as lead defense counsel for President Trump in the Fulton County, Georgia case is this, quote, we respectfully disagree with Judge McAfee's order refusing to dismiss the indictment. What a big shock there. And we'll continue to evaluate our options regarding the First Amendment challenges. It is significant that the court's ruling was without prejudice as it made clear that defendants were not foreclosed from again raising their as-applied challenges at the appropriate time after the establishment of a factual record. So there you have it. It doesn't seem that McAfee, it doesn't seem that Cash Money G. Willis, they're not going to let this thing go. And you can expect, so where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? I think you can expect there's going to be a lot more coming down the pipe is in regards of appeals, a lot more pretrial motions. Um, you know, they filed that interlocutory appeal, which uh, essentially was appealing to the higher court. The panel of judges, the three panel of judges still have, I think, 40 days or so to decide. There still hasn't been a response from the state, from Cash Money G. This is Judge McAfee's ruling. He thinks that there was enough to the speech that was willful and had harmful intent, and they understood what they were doing, they understood what they were saying, and that willful and harmful intent in some way, shape, or form was meant to uh, malign or, or blight the Georgia 2020 election process. Um, but he also, again, he leaves safe language everywhere in all his rulings so far. But he also said that it's really not up to me, that it's up to a jury to decide. Uh, and so uh, it's going to be interesting to see. I, for one, just on a personal level, I kind of want to see this go to trial. And I agree with Harrison Floyd. I think having somebody as incompetent, somebody as unprofessional, somebody as, you know, unskilled and unprepared as Cash Money G. Willis prosecuting this it's going to just, it's going to be a day of vindication. It's going to be a final day. All this drama for your mama, all this garbage that has shrouded this case from day one, it's going to be an ultimate vindication eventually. This is a small setback. It's not a giant W as the leftists and radical leftists like to think. 
Um, there's going to be a lot more coming. We still haven't heard from the Georgia Appeal Court, the appellate court. Uh, we still haven't heard from Senator Bill Cowsert. Is he going to subpoena cash money G. Willis? We don't know. There's probably going to be a lot more pretrial motions, a lot more appeals down the pipe. This thing is far from over. Sadow, he's got so much knowledge. He's got so many more, I think, avenues of approach to get this case. He's what what Sadow is doing is Sadow is just throwing things out there that are actually legitimate in the hopes that the court will kind of come to their senses. And also it's delaying things. You see, Trump doesn't want to see this go to trial at all, but he definitely doesn't want this trial to go before the election because it's going to have a major impact on his ability to win and his ability to really campaign, to be honest. Fannie Cashmoney G, that's why she went and saw Kamala Harris. That's why she's uh, in cahoots with the Obama-Clinton you know, consortium. They want this to go to court as fast as possible. That's why Nathan Wade resigned minutes after the uh, ruling came out for the disqualification hearing that it was either Fannie or Wade. Wade left and Fannie's like, I'll take care of it. Don't worry. Don't worry about a thing. I got this covered. My reputation doesn't need any repair. I like how Harrison uh, Floyd calls her a, a DEI thug who, whose day is coming. I, I, I can't agree more, but I want to throw this off to you guys. What do you guys think of this? What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments. I would love to hear from you. I try really, really hard to respond to everybody. It's literally physically impossible, but I try my best. Obviously, new members, not new members, but members and uh, super chats and super thanks get top priority. Um, consider becoming a member. It only costs you a cup of coffee that you spend, you know, in less than 30 seconds for an entire month of being a member. You get top priority, exclusive content, uh, badges next to your name and live stream, special shout outs, special privileges. Consider becoming a member. It costs you, like I said, a cup of coffee. If you made it this far, don't forget to, uh, become an As Nation Insider. It's our free newsletter. It's in the pinned comment in the description and the show notes. Just click on the link, click on the option for free newsletter. Give us your best email and bada boom, you're in. We don't share, we don't spam, uh, and you get all the latest, greatest updates, breaking news right to your inbox that mainstream media won't share with you. So become a Nez Nation Insider. It's absolutely imperative and it's beautiful. It's a great way to always be in the know. Check out these videos coming up. Here is the live stream I did with Harrison Floyd, who's a co-defendant, right up here. Check that video out down there as always. Nez, just click on it. God bless you, your families, and God bless America. I'll see you very soon.